What's up guys, Sean the Bro here, and in today's episode of the Fighting Game Tutorial Series, we are going to be going over Screen Shake or Camera Shake. And so, basically, when we attack our character, or when our character gets attacked and they take damage, we want to apply a visual effect of Screen Shake or Camera Shake, that way we can emphasize the impact of the hit. So as we come into the game here, skip the entrances and everything. I attack my character, and you'll see the screen shakes now. Now, it's a little too violent right now. However, this is just to demonstrate what we can do with this. We have a lot of options for how powerful the shake actually is. And you can actually customize it to the amount of damage that was taken and other things like that. Right now, it's all the same. If you actually are using this too much, it can be a problem. If you're not using it enough, the impacts from the hits might not feel like they are beefy enough. So there's a lot to consider, but it's very easy to customize, and I'm going to give you all the tools you need to do so. Before we get started on this episode, if you want to get caught up in the series, I will link the entire fighting game tutorial series right here in the top right corner. This is episode 223, and we still have a long way to go, so you can get caught up and check out how we've done everything to date. Alternatively, if you don't care about that, but you just care about the camera shake, I'll go ahead and link you to this episode right here, which is the first episode of visual effects that we did, because this isn't the first VFX episode we've done in this series, and you may be interested in other ways to make your fights feel more meaningful. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and get started. The first thing we are going to need to do is our actual camera shake effect, and we create that effect through something called a camera shake class in Unreal Engine. So I'm going to make a new C++ class, so go to my C++ classes, fire template, and I'm going to right click and press new C++ class. If you're in Unreal Engine 4, you can press add new C++ class right there. And we're going to go to all classes, and we're going to look for camera shake. You have a few different options here. The one I'm going to use is the legacy camera shake because the legacy camera shake is the matinee camera shake from Unreal Engine 4. So if you're in Unreal Engine 4 up to Unreal Engine 5.1, you'll see matinee camera shake. It's spelled like this. But that's not here anymore. The legacy camera shake is what took that over. So if you don't see legacy camera shake, look for matinee camera shake. Otherwise, we want Legacy Camera Shake right here. You can also use Camera Shake Base, but the Legacy Camera Shake has some more things that I want to use today, so might as well go to that level. But if you are familiar with exactly what you want in your Camera Shake, of course, you can use the Camera Shake Base and customize it to your liking. Then you hit Next, and you can name it whatever you want. I just called it Damage Camera Shake. And you see I already have one, so it's going to give me this error, but otherwise you can go ahead and hit Create Class. Now, since I'm launching through Visual Studio, when I do this, it is going to ask me to reload Visual Studio or my compiler, and I might have to also reload the engine, but eventually we'll be good to go, and you go into Visual Studio, and you'll see that your class should be here. So damage camera shake .h and damage camera shake .cpp. We're gonna go ahead and open both of them up. So here's damage camera shake .h. It's very, very simple. In fact, everything is going to be in here this file already that you see on the screen, except what's highlighted right now. Really, all we're doing is creating a class that stores the values for the shake. Then we're going to play the camera shake when the character takes damage. So we don't really have a lot that we have to do in here. We just have to assign all the values properly. First things first, let's go ahead and make our constructor. So I just use the public keyword here. Then I have the name of my class. So I called it damage camera shake. So we have U damage camera shake, and in this case, we just need to mimic whatever our name is. So U damage camera shake parentheses semicolon. It's literally that simple. We're just making our constructor for our camera shake class. At this point, we want to go into our C++ class. So damage camera shake .cpp. Now in here, you'll only have these two lines, so we'll have to fill out the entire constructor. So U damage camera shake colon colon U damage camera shake. And then in here is where we fill out all the default values for what we want our camera shake to look like. I have this commented, but you have a lot of different options here. So we have the oscillation duration, the oscillation blend in time, and the oscillation blend out time. Oscillation, if you're not familiar, is really just movement. There's more to it than that, but that's how you can think of it. This is the movement or the shake duration. So the entire duration of the camera shake effect. 
I've noted here this is the length in seconds and the blend in time and blend out time are also in seconds. So blend in time means how long does it take to go from no effect to full effect? Blend in time will give you a little bit of offset. There is a little bit of that blend and same with the blend out time. It will also have a little bit of blend when you're exiting that effect. So it doesn't go straight from effect to normal. There is a little bit of blend. It's not required but I chose to give it a value here. So my total duration of the effect is 0.5F or 0.5 seconds, which means half a second. The blend in time is 0.1F or 0.1 seconds. Blend out time is 0.2F or 0.2 seconds. Again, fully customizable. You're going for the effect that you want for your game, so it could be completely different from my values, but this is what I chose for mine. Now, you have the ability to rotate and move your oscillation on the X, Y, and Z axes. In my particular case, what I did was add rotation on the pitch and location on the Y and the Z axes. The pitch is the left and right. So the first thing we have here is raw oscillation dot pitch dot amplitude equals 3.0F. Amplitude is really how high this curve is going to be. At the core of these camera shake classes, they're really a graph and the graph data is being read. So amplitude is the maximum value that this curve on this graph is going to have. The higher your amplitude, the more rotational oscillation you're going to be getting. 3.0, for fighting games specifically, I'd probably actually turn this down, maybe make it 1.5, but you'll have to play with it. The frequency is how many times this is going to occur in a given period of time. Really, it's how often the curves on the graph are going to repeat. By making it 3.0F, that means it will occur one and a half times for this specific example because the entire duration is 0.5F. So if the frequency is three times per second and we have half a second, that's 1.5 times. The higher you make this number, the more this rotation is going to repeat itself and be applied. The lower you make this number, the less frequent it's going to be. Then you have the initial offset. So the initial offset is literally where we're going to start on that graph. You could use this value. This is an enum that Unreal has, E initial oscillator offset. If I am to add the colons here, you'll see we have max, random, and zero. Zero is going to start the graph at the initial value every time it's not going to offset it. Max isn't really a value. A lot of enums will have this underscore max variable in them. It's a coding standard, so you know how many results or possibilities are in that enum. And then you have offset random, which is going to allow it to start at a random value. So it's not the exact same shake every time. I wanted that, so I chose offset random, but you definitely could choose offset zero. Then we have the waveform, which is the type of graph, really the type of curve that we're going to use. And we have another enum that Unreal has supplied us with, the E oscillator waveform, and you have the choices of Perlin noise and sine wave. Sine wave or sine curve is something that a lot more people are going to be familiar with. I actually wasn't familiar with Perlin noise when I started using camera shakes for another tutorial series, so I learned about it for that. But essentially a sine wave is going to be your standard curve of up below zero and down below zero an equal amount. Perlin noise is going to make it seem a little bit more random because the values aren't so equivalent on each side. So Perlin noise just kind of adds some random. It's not really random, but that's how you can think of it. Since we can't actually visualize the graph here, we're not plotting it. Perlin noise is closer to a more randomized result. Take that with a grain of salt, but just play around with Perlin noise and sine wave. You should be able to tell the difference. Now we also have the location oscillation, which is just the movement, the actual transformation or the translation on the axes. So again, the rotation, I use the pitch. You have pitch, yaw, and roll. These follow the standard Unreal Engine pitch, yaw, and roll for rotations. So that's pretty simple. And then same with the X, Y, and Z. These follow the same as the X, Y, and Z coordinates in the engine. The X in our case is the depth, getting closer or farther away from the characters. I don't need that in my case, so I chose the Y and the Z. For the amplitude, I did 5.0. The frequency, I did 3.0. The offset is random, and the waveform is a sine wave. The Z axis, I used 3.0 for the amplitude, 1.0 for the frequency, random for the offset, and a sine wave for the waveform. As I keep saying, customize it to your liking. These are just some sample or template values you can use. Once you have your camera shake class, we can go ahead and enter our character class, specifically our base character.cpp. 
For me, that's my fighter template character.cpp. We need to trigger this camera shake class when the character takes damage. To access this class at all, we need to include it. So right up at the top with the rest of your includes, make sure you add an include for your camera shake class. Again, mine is called damage camera shake. So I have to include damage camera shake dot H. We're gonna call it or trigger it in take damage. So I'm gonna search for take damage. And here's my function right here. We have a ton of logic in this function. So if you haven't been following the series, this is gonna look like a lot. If you have, you should be familiar with most of this. Essentially, we check to see if the character is ready to counter, if they're not ready to counter. We check to see if the round should be over or not, or the match should be over or not. Then we check and make sure the character is not in some sort of super or special move where they can't break out of it. We determine and make sure the character is not able to block. If they're not able to block, they don't enter the blocking state, thus they can't take reduced damage. In my case, I'm only going to have the camera shake play when the character does not block the attack. So the attack actually has to land, so the blocking isn't taking any action. But you could, of course, have the camera shake play during the block. If you're following my behavior, then this if statement right here is where we want to put the camera shake. At this current time, I'm going to have the camera shake be consistent. So as long as the character is taking any damage, we're going to play the same effect. I can avoid looking at the attack state. So it doesn't matter if this is a counter hit. Don't care. We want to do it for all attacks. Doesn't matter if there's damage decay. We want to do it for all attacks. So quite literally, we can go to our if statement right here, checking for the block. And since we're not in the block, if we're inside this if statement, we can follow it down to the bottom below the hit sounds, below the super meter, below determining if the character was hit by this attack, below hit stop, below pushback. At the very end here, I've added a new line. See, we're not at the else yet. This is the last line in that if statement. We're gonna play our camera shake effect. We're gonna do this by using our U gameplay statics colon colon get player camera manager function right here. So this is a function that exists within Unreal. We can get a camera manager class, which exists by default. We don't have to set one up. The way you get it is by plugging in the context or the world and then the index that you want to retrieve. So get world works for us. That's all we need to do. So just get world index zero. This is the first player, which is perfectly fine, especially for our type of camera that we're using, where it's one camera focusing both characters or both players. And we can call start camera shake on that. Start camera shake just takes in the camera shake class that you created. Once you pass that class along, it will automatically trigger the constructor and the constructor has all the values we need to perform the camera shake. So start camera shake and we're gonna pass in u damage camera shake colon colon static class parentheses. This will play our camera shake. Now we can go ahead and load up the engine. At this point, we can come into our game and see our camera shake actually working on hit or on taking damage. And that's exactly what we want for today's episode. Anyway, guys, that's all I got for you today. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this episode on screen shake and camera shake in the fighting game tutorial series. If you did, please subscribe. It helps me more than anything else you can do. And it encourages me to keep making more of this content because I know you like it. Also, I want to give a huge shout out to the Patreon, YouTube membership, and Discord subscribers. You guys are so kind and I am incredibly grateful. If you're interested in joining, you can go ahead and click the icon in the top right corner to check that out. If you ran into any problems while following this episode, you can check out the Discord community. There's a link in the description, and we would be happy to help you. Thanks again, guys. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.